Ask questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about your time in the RAF. Ah, oh, well, that was the one of the happiest times of my life, Drew. Um, my mum always wanted me to be uh, a PE teacher. And uh, after doing my training, I uh, did one semester at school and I really didn't like it. And uh, I quit the job and uh, was home one day and met one of my friends who had joined the Air Force when I went off to university. And, uh, <laughs> and we went for a drink and uh, three or four beers later, he took me to the recruiting office and uh, I signed up something like that very day um, to be a physical fitness officer in the Air Force and uh, off I went did my training and uh, found out that physical training in the Air Force wasn't like you know physical education it was all grunt and sweat so uh, I decided that wasn't for me and uh, one day I was talking to the wing commander and he said well what do you really want to do and this jet flew overhead and I said well how about doing that and he said, are you serious? I said, yeah. I said, I'll go and fly an aeroplane. So uh, off I went and did my basic training. And uh, uh, when I passed out as a, as a young pilot, as a flying officer, um, the first thing they did was sent me off to bomber school and uh, I flew as a co-pilot on a nuclear bomber for a year. Uh, that was that was quite stressful because it was during the Cold War back in the mid 60s and uh, you know we, we used to do an eight-hour circuit uh, over the North Sea and up uh, uh, past uh, Finland and Norway and uh, back down again and the Russians did the same thing their side and uh, we didn't know at any one moment somebody could decide to push the button and we'd be off but um, that was all right. I did that for a year, and um, when I when I left that uh, posting, uh, I was posted to what was called Transport Command, and um, I went on to an aircraft called a Beverly, which was a great lumbering giant of a thing that used the, the paratroopers used to use it to, to jump out of. It was like a double decker, and the paratroopers used to jump out of both decks. That's awesome. Um, that, that, but that didn't go very far, that just sort of went around the UK and dropping paratroopers for training. Oh, yeah. uh, and from there I went on to a, um, a thing called a, a Hastings, which was a twin-engined uh, uh, engine. And uh, again, that was used for parachuting and uh, parachute dropping. But we did a little bit more adventurous stuff. We went, uh, went over to the continent and uh, did some exercises with the... Uh, Germans and the French and um, and I lasted that for two years and uh, after that uh, I was posted to Transport Command and um, flew a thing called, called a Britannia four-engine turboprop uh, and went all around the world went everywhere went to Australia in it went to Singapore went to Hong Kong uh, went to the, come over here to the States quite a bit uh, went to Wake, Hickam, um, Guam. Uh, that was a, that was a great, great posting, great tour, and um, that was probably the happiest time of my life flying in the Air Force. Oh, yeah. uh, and then the day came where uh, they decided to shrink the Air Force down, and um, I ended up in air traffic control, and uh, I did that for nearly three years, and. Uh, came out of the Air Force after doing 15 years service Damn. and um, bummed around for six months then decided to go and fly for British Airways and I did that for nearly 10 years and uh, that was it that was the end of my flying days basically but uh, flying was I, I enjoyed it um, I don't think I was a natural I just just was a pilot you know just, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't born to fly, it's just something that I did, but I enjoyed it. And, um, you know, I think that's something that you would enjoy if you can't become a pilot, uh, you know. Um, I think the next best thing to being a pilot is to be a loadmaster, uh, because the whole back of the aeroplane is yours, you know. Oh, yeah. the, the driver just drives it, the navigator tells him where to go, if he has a navigator, but 
Um, you know, you're you're basically in charge of everything: the passengers, the the weight, the freight, the weight and balance of the aircraft. Um, you know, you're you're a very 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 important crew member because if it's the, the load is not right, then uh, you know you could the accident could be cause a serious accident. You know. Oh, yeah. If the balance wasn't right, why not get off the air, off the runway? That's right. <laughs> it's too heavy. Oh, so yeah. a, I think you'd be a good load master. I, I think that would that would suit you down to the ground, and you, you get to do a lot of things. You know, you get par to do parachute dropping, uh, freight dropping, uh, heavy armor dropping, dropping. I mean, imagine dropping a tank out of the back of a Hercules. That would be awesome. You know, you see the thing go out the back and. You know. Bet there'd be a huge like lift to the aircraft. You do actually when when you're flying the thing, and um, you know uh, stuff goes out of the back. The Beverly was the same. We, we used to drop tanks out of the Beverly or small tanks, armored cars. You know, uh, you, you felt it move. You felt the center of gravity of the aircraft move as it was rolling, and you know you just compensated for that. But as it went out of the back, you know there was a definite. Oh, yeah. You know, so you knew it, you knew it was gone. Um, yeah, uh, that was interesting. And then you could circle round. You could see the thing hurt into the. Sometimes, actually, actually, drew a couple of times, and the chute never opened. And uh, uh, we had a Land Rover go out of the back one time, <laughs> and the chute never opened. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, that was it. Was interesting time. That was great. I think you'd be a good loadmaster. I think you'd enjoy that. Oh yeah. So, yeah, that's an interesting little story for you. Yes, sir. I'll stop it right here.